Hello! On site here are 20 classic Australian diesel locomotives, some of which still work in active service on the main line hauling freight trains. Welcome to Ralfith. We're here at Streamliners 2022, a unique railway enthusiast event, which is a gathering of primarily classic bulldog nose electromotive diesel locomotives. Here in Australia, many of these units still outlast the test of time and can be seen running in full fury on our main lines across the country, hauling freight trains, works trains, and of course, heritage mainline rail tours. Leading this event and the enthusiasm and passion for these locomotives is this guy. To many of us Australian enthusiasts and industry employees, he needs little introduction. Oh, Streamliners 2022 is uh, the combination of bringing some of Australia's Claude GM logos together as, as well as a, uh, the George Celebration with Progress Rail who, uh, who are celebrating EMD centenary of 100 years as well, which is why we've got uh, some Claude Julian Hood units in the mix. So uh, it's been 70 years for Aussie Streamliners, and uh, we we're going to hold the, the uh, event last year, but uh, the restrictions are actually year here. But uh, they've only aged one year more since last year, so we're still pretty good. Well, the significance of BMD and Australian Railways is that um, they've been part of the Australian Railways scene since 1951, when the Commonwealth Railways first got their GMs, and they've been part of the scene ever since, right up to the newer locomotives that uh, Progress Rail are importing from Muncie, Indiana. And they've just been a part of our scene for, for all those years. And uh, yeah, you sort of grow fond of them, and. and but they're a worldwide sound, you know, and um, so like, even the turbo charge EMDs, so those in England can, re can, uh, can relate to them with like their class 66s from the EWS. Um, and of course, all through the States, they still run them. But probably we, we would use, we would use more streamliners in freight service than certainly those in the States. So we've sort of, I think we might be, they might be a little bit envious of us, but the fact that uh, our gear's all still out in the main line earning, earning coin as opposed to on some little short line somewhere. Uh, of all the logos that appeared this year, this weekend, my favourite would probably, um, yeah, it would have to be uh, S303, the one on the turntable. So, um, because it's in VR and I drove it when it was a government engine, and, and uh, 311, of course, I drove it in government service, but 303's in the, in the uh, colour scheme that it was in when I did drive it. So, yeah, back to the future. The Golden community has been awesome, as is the support of the Goldman Roundhouse. As for the Roundhouse itself, it's just under underutilised. So they've been absolutely awesome. But um, the chairman, Dale Wake, he's been like phenomenal. Um, he likes Alcos, but oh, well, it's not his fault. But um, no, it's just been huge. Huge help. Well, it's a big crowd puller with a couple of days that it's on. And uh, we, we, we started back in 2015 with the first one, and I was involved. And then Bernie's keeping in contact with us to run it, so we've made these uh, 20 roads available and all we do is clear them out and he positions what he's got to show. So it, it's, it, it's well worth the town too, isn't it? It'll gain from, well, accommodation and people coming and going, even overseas people. There's an American bloke here, a reporter of some sort, he's come out the last one. Yeah, I was here in 20, uh, 2016 also for this event. You know, as, as, as a, a Gunzel, I find it to be uh, a lot more interesting than what you see there. Although I do love the Pilbara, which is like modern U.S. railways. 
Well, well, we find these locomotives here running in, in daily service, whereas, you know, tourist operations, museums in the, in the States. I, I just love it down here. I love the people, you know, I love the, uh, the weather, uh, the trains, and the food, and uh, it's, it's just a great country. It really what is. Food? What food do you like? Uh, seafood is, uh, besides seeing food and eating it, I do like seafood with the A, and you do get good seafood here. We acquired CL17, which was um, AKA CLB10, which had been um, was originally built in 1972 for the Commonwealth Railways. Uh, 1994, though, it was overhauled and remanufactured by uh, Morrison Nutson in Wyala. The ship had a CLP10. So after several years in service, um, uh, a few years back, we, were, um, we got wind that they were they were sold it to an international company. It was going to ship it and uh, a bunch of other units of the same class to South Africa are going to be stripped for parts and the carcass of scrap. So we couldn't let that happen because CL17 is the last streamliner with the EMD nose built anywhere in the world. Six years after Union Pacific had the M1 class one built by EMD in the Grange. So yeah, we just couldn't, couldn't see it go to waste. So we put a GoFundMe program together and managed to raise a coin in in a few weeks and saved it. Been working on it ever since. The locomotive as it stands now, um, there's still external work to be done. The prime mover's working, uh, we had it running this morning. Um, we've still got to put the horns on, finish the marker lights. We're hoping to have that ready in 12 months time and maybe another launch. Um, we're, we're, we're just glad that it got saved and we're pushing ahead. We need volunteers still to sort of help us with the restoration process. We need welders, we need people to sort of finish off the bodywork, stuff like that. Um, there's stuff inside to be done. Um, so if you're interested in restoring it, um, inquiries at streamlinersaustralia.org.au um, and um, let us know. Since this event took place and through to the production and release of this video, Work on CL17 had slowed considerably due to the team losing a few key volunteers as a result of life changes, taking them away from the project or ill health. In July 2023, at the time of this video's release, Bernie recently announced a few changes to the project, that it will be hauled to the Seymour Rail Heritage Centre where body work will be completed, as well as final electrical and mechanical work as required. The GoFundMe account that Bernie mentioned previously in the interview has been resurrected to help fundraise for the last phase of this work. Links and details in the description below. Special to the rail fans, especially older rail fans, because they represent a, a, an era when, when travelling by train was a class act. But um, to a lot of us, we, we grew up with these. Uh, some of us cut our teeth on them as engine-men. And um, they look classy and stylish, and of course they're, they're available in model form as well. And, and a lot of kids remember them having as models and, and stuff like that. It's a, they've got older, so they represent a whole different bunch of things. This room here was the old fitter's locker room, and when we moved in here, I think it was 2011, before my time, it was a mess. There was no window glass in any of the windows. Um, the big steel beams above, we had to put it, the members put in. We eventually done the windows, painted it all. 20. I joined 2013 and I think 2015 we started to build this current layout but we didn't go anywhere for about three years, it was very slow but from about 2019 on we really started this and we're getting pretty close to finishing the main stuff but there's a lot of fiddly little bits still to be done. Well this side here is DCC 
which runs around the layout over there does a loop. All the other loop is DC. This part in the, up the other end, they are connected, but we run them separately, but they can be connected. So yeah. we've had quite, we had two or three members that were really good at building layouts. So yeah. yeah. Um, we, it's not based on anywhere. Yeah. It's just a random sort of yeah. scene. Um, well, we've gained a few new members and I think a lot of people now you know, know we're here and it gives us a bit of a pat in the back that we've actually achieved something when many years ago we were told we weren't able to do it. So, yeah. Oh, we're back. It's been fantastic. Everyone who walks through that front door has just been saying, wow, and we're, yeah, we're over the moon by the response. Well, we bought up uh, miniature trains uh, that are bullnose because they match the bullnose diesels around here and uh, we thought it would add to the presentation of the place to have something that's novel and a little bit different and uh, yes yeah, so the locos normally run at Diamond Valley Railway they're powered by petrol engines and um, on the truck there we have uh, two that have Honda Civic powered 1975 engine with uh, automatic transmission driven on all 12 wheels. The orange engine is a Mazda 323 driving an aircraft generator which drives traction electric motors to the wheels. It took me three years to build the first one. Uh, unfortunately I live in an age where you can get uh, laser cutting done for the the sides. The nose is a fiberglass with metal um, laser cut frame inside to support them. And um, yes, on a steel chassis, and they run very well. They weigh just over one ton each, and they're quite capable of very high speeds because they've got a car engine in them. But we are limited, of course, because the gauge is so much narrower that we can't run the wheelbase that we'd like to run because of the sharp curves. But the couplings are fully functional, uh, just like the, the authentic real ones. They have suspension, just like the real ones, and they run extremely well. They have air compressors for air brakes for the loco and the trains. <laughs> Void your worry. 2.4 litre high ace motor running a 400 name aircraft generator. Okay. Where does the aircraft generator come from? Out of an aeroplane. Arizona graveyard. Do, uh, do you know what type of aircraft? No, but I know it's a general electric 4 cm generator, 400 amp. And you'll hear it when I ramp up because it whistles. Makes the right noises. Preserved and operating railway roundhouse facilities are a rarity in Australia. However, we're very fortunate that there are at least a few surviving examples in each state to represent the railway history of their location. On this same weekend as Three Miners 2022, we also covered the celebration of another railway roundhouse, that being the town of Juni in New South Wales. All right, so if you like this video, please like and subscribe to the channel. It'd be well worth it. Thank you, Bernie. Absolute pleasure, mate. Thank you. Awesome. That was, that was good. The content of it looks really oh, good. Oh, I hate the sound of my own voice. That's it. Now go watch the next video, and until next time, thank you and good day.